Hey, Big Toes, this is Vention. <laughs> Boy, that pool is almost worth the price of admission right there. <laughs> I um, had to wait till it got a little later because being from the way north, I uh, can't handle first full strength sun, at least not right away. <laughs> so I was swimming with sunglasses. <laughs> And everybody said, ooh, that guy's weird. That's perfectly okay. <laughs> Still, uh, so cancer isn't the only thing that's happening in my life. Ooh, it's chilly in here. Ooh. So, um, cancer treatments are going well. I'm convinced it's working. There is less, significantly less blood in the toilet now. Um, but that could be due to all the enemas, enema routines. Their equipment is so much better than mine, and the recipe they use doesn't trigger the, the convulsive contractions in, in my guts that my own coffee, uh, um, my usual coffee does. So um, I realize I have a lot of room for improvement, and I'm gonna get their, their recipe, and I'm gonna get that type of equipment and because it's a, it delivers the uh, the dose a lot slower than uh, than the one I have. So uh, and the one I have to, I have to like be hands on. I have to like completely like get ready to shut it off and turn it on and shut it off because otherwise it'll uh, go too fast and then I will be uh, it'll be wasted because I'll have to dump it or it'll come blasting out in the shower. Pardon the <laughs> the grody way of uh, describing that. <laughs> But you know, when you get it, when you get colon cancer, you just you it's just gonna be gory, you know, you're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> but uh feel free to to not listen. <laughs> Ooh, somebody over there is kite surfing. It's way down there, but uh it's by that white building over there. That that's something I'd like to do someday. I don't have time to do it now. But what I do want to do is uh, every day after the cancer center, I'm going to uh, see if I if I have enough energy for it. I'm going to try to hit that pool and do some laps every day because, man, uh, I used to be able to swim in such a way that, I mean, I could swim a lot longer than I just did. And, and when I did today, man, my arms got so sore so quick. <laughs> it didn't take long for me to have enough. And... And I timed it right because the sun went down behind the building and now everything's in shade. And it's actually quite cool for, uh, for this, uh, this part of Mexico right now. So yeah, good times. Um, my treatments are going well. I, am tr I continue to be impressed with that place. I mean, the moment, one, the moment you finish one treatment, another, a technician shows up to take you to the next one. They have like, it's a real orchestrated uh, operation and they're really well organized. I'm impressed. <laughs> so um, good people there too. Uh, they used to use some kind of like, like borderline cultish behavior, like all kinds of hugs and love and whatnot, you know, and, but uh, COVID took care of that. So I don't have to tolerate a lot of that, but uh, there is some, but it's, tolerable, you know, and some of the chicks are hot. So, hey, well, whatever. <laughs> so, um, so basically the other day I had, uh, Friday I had four IVs, you know, each one takes about a half hour to 45 minutes or so. And then the, uh, and then with each, while the, while the IV was going, I would go continue on to more, my other treatments. You know, I would have like, infrared and electrical heating and uh, uh, the pizza oven sauna is what I had uh, Friday. There are two types of sauna. One is the type that I have at home and the other type is, uh, is, the, uh, is the pizza oven type where you lay down, you know, and, uh, and they pushed my body temperature up to 105 in that one. And when you get up to fever temperatures, uh, cancer tumors have been known to fall apart. So, and combined with all the other stuff that we're doing, um, yeah, I think I got a shot. I think I do. And I don't wanna really compare myself favorably too much with uh, the other patients, but uh, 
I seem to be the pretty close to the most conspiracy wacko, conspiracy wacko among us all. We've got an, we've got a couple of more, a couple other preppers there. Uh, you know, the silver stacker gun guys, you know, and, uh, people who are less likely to take the word for the can of the cancer industry to, uh, to, um, you know, to make their decisions. You know, we don't, we, you know, we always look at what is the profit motive of the reason why they're telling us to do whatever, right? And always look for the profit motive because people do not work for free. Um, and if they put out a bunch of stupid BS, like, like all of this uh, virus stuff and, and Fauci and his, uh, and his roommate, Bill Gates, <laughs> supposedly they were roommates in college. Uh, those people are all so connected. I would almost, you know, say that in a way they are not free. They are less free in a way than I am because they're always under the gun and they probably all, almost certainly all have these uh, blackmail files of doing horrible things on Epstein's Island and whatnot. And then they, uh, it's all filmed and then they're, then they are able to be trusted by the elites to do all kinds of horrific things for them. And, um, and then they continue to be in charge and we continue to not to be in charge. But uh, in a way, if we can move outside of the system, we become more free in many ways than those people are because they can't go anywhere. They are, they are stuck and they are under a hierarchy and if they try to get away, um, they'll just get wrecked. Um, and I think we've already seen that. So, um, so basically, uh, the cancer clinic is going awesome. Uh, uh, I'm getting, geez, the infrared heating, indirect infrared heating, pizza oven, uh, getting hyperbaric oxygen. I was in that chamber the other day. Um, and it's uh, cool. I was kind of concerned about the hyperbaric oxygen uh, uh, chamber because, uh, you know, remember Apollo 1 uh, with Gus Grissom, how they decided to kill him because he uh, blew the whistle on the Apollo program. And um, then basically uh, they, they decided to change policy and pressurize the, co the uh, capsule uh, to like way above atmospheric pressure at a pure oxygen environment, man, those people were, they were just, that's, that would became a death trap. But uh, with the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, the only thing that happens is that they pressurize it with regular air to about 32 PSI, believe it or not, I'm like the, I'm like on the inside of a car tire. I'm that, I'm that pressurized in there. And I'm, uh, then I, the oxygen is delivered with a nose adapter that attaches to a little oxygen supply. So, um, so you don't get an excessive oxygen load in there, so therefore it won't explode and kill me. <laughs> I like that, you know, that's good. Good thinking. Um, geez, what else? And the, uh, I can't recommend the food there too much because uh, as far as taste goes, but I suspect it is exceptionally organic and extremely healthy. Um, I have, oftentimes it's good because I'm generally quite hungry in the morning and, and they provide you with this juice. Uh, they, they basically, uh, at the end of the day, they give you a stainless steel con uh, bottle of, uh, of juice of a juice drink that they create, you know, with organic fruit, of course, and vegetables. And uh, then you drink that in the morning. And the cool thing is it totally destroys your cravings for uh, deep fried cinnamon rolls and things like that, that you might otherwise be tempted to get if you didn't get that juice. <laughs> so I can take a couple of meds with the juice and then uh, take off there. And then they have this... Uh, well, basically, it's a prayer circle, right? They uh, they all do the uh, the uh, um, the the guy who runs the thing. He uh, plays a couple of songs on a guitar, and then he uh, and then sometimes they sing. But I haven't done. I haven't. Uh, you know, how can I do it if I don't know the tones, right? I can't. I mean, they give you the lyrics, but I can't. 
uh, I would have to hear the tones in order to, uh, in order to, uh, you know, be anything but a disruption in that, uh, in that endeavor. And I am, as you guys are well aware, I'm one of those paranormal weirdos who, uh, who can see auras around his hand, hands and stuff. And, uh, basically I have seen enough to be absolutely convinced of a spiritual side of our nature that continues to exist after we pass away. Uh, I have seen too much to doubt it. So, um, so what I'm doing is I will be there with them and I will be praying with them. But when I'm praying, I will not necessarily be praying as they are. I will be basically, uh, in a way, phoning home, kind of like E.T., you know. Um, <laughs> and there is, you know, nothing really wrong with that. So, uh, although some people, they are so anti-religious that it almost becomes a religion to them. They, uh, they have such, such, they're so spiky and anger, angry, you know, if anybody even suggests something like that, you know, and it's like, I mean, it's like you're pulling down your pants and showing their, your ass to them or something. <laughs> That's how shocked they are. <laughs> Leftists, mostly. Uh, those are the same people who are burning down all the cities. Hope they get tired of doing that shit because it's getting old quick. <laughs> well, anyway, um, so uh, we do the hyperbaric oxygen and then there's this weird shaker thing you stand on that shakes your liver. And then there's this, uh, then they do colonics. I haven't done that yet. They hook you up to this uh, weird thing and uh, do all kinds of horrific things that like those gray aliens are supposed to be doing, you know? Um, and it flushes you out, you know? And, uh, but the regular enemas are so stellar at that, that man, those colonics, if that's better, geez, I cannot complain. Um, I feel as though this is working. I'm pretty darn close to convinced that it's working. Uh, the amount of blood in the toilet is negligible now, whereas before it used to be almost, almost look like uh, a little bit of uh, power steering fluid in the, uh, in the uh, toilet, you know, and, and it's, some of it was kind of oily a little bit too. Uh, and, um, and it would look, some of the, what, well, maybe I shouldn't just, Okay, plug your ears if you're sensitive. <laughs> Some of it looks like that goo in the tray when you dump out a steak from the store and that goo that's laying in the, in the thing. Well, it's that. It looks like that. <laughs> Which is quite repulsive. <laughs> so uh, let's see, what else do I do? Um, well, uh, I'm learning my way around and that... The DVD that I studied of Spanish for like seven or eight months back in 2010, man, it is coming back to me like big time it's coming back. And then when I have something that I knew that I knew once, I can pop up and pop open Google Translate and get the word and then I've got it again. Um, I, I seem to be the one who's the best at that is or the most likely to work with Spanish or speak Spanish among the patients, except for those people who actually speak it natively. Like one chick, uh, she actually does. Oops, it looks like the guy's coming to bring me some water. I'm gonna have to let you go guys and don't get married.